Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Paper silver versus physical silver. Let's explore. This is a really cool looking infographic, probably one of the better ones I've seen that was shared with me by a member of the community and a source from bullionstar.com. And with infographics like this, you, know, you have to consider the source too. Obviously, it's a bullion dealer and the like. And some of this isn't quite sourced as well as I'd like it to be. Uh, but nonetheless, it's very interesting to see some of the statistics here. Because one thing we do know, there's a lot more of the paper than there is of the physical. In fact, they're saying here that the paper silver market is 243 times larger than the physical silver market. Now, I can believe it. And so, hence, therefore, paper silver trading volume versus the physical silver supply in a ratio is, well, naturally 243 to 1. How do they get this number? Well, 7,300,000 tons of paper silver traded annually in London and on the COMEX. And this is from the annual exchange trading volumes of 2020, sourced from the Silver Institute World Silver Survey. So that's where they're getting their information from. So you have that amount of paper silver compared to 30,060 tons of annual physical silver supply. So yeah, obviously a big differential there between the two, indeed. Uh, now, when we think of this number, how does that jive with the debt clock? Which, because we know the debt clock also has this information. Uh, so they're talking about from the LBMA and the COMEX. And from those points, there's 243. But what about here with the paper to silver ratio that we see here from the um, U.S. debt clock? It's 186.52. Well, this is a little bit of a wider area. And I guess other exchanges... This is the number of paper silver ounces traded on the major world silver exchanges. Uh, so I guess that means all of them, which uh, means that there probably is places like PSLV and others uh, that may have a more true representation are going to bring that number down. So uh, that's the amount traded on the major world silver exchanges divided by the actual world production of silver and ounces. Now, I don't know if this is annualized or what, how that is uh, uh, figured out. But uh, nonetheless, this is from silver exchanges in the USGS. And I've not looked up the silver exchanges site, but that's that pretty interesting indeed. So there's a disparity there between the two. Of course, the U.S. debt clock, some of their numbers have been, been revised downwards. But I think there's reason for that that I talked about in my debt clock videos. So search those out if you haven't seen them. So let's talk a little bit about the physical silver supply. The annual physical su silver supply is 30,000 uh, and 60 tons per year, which is 0.4% of the annual volume traded. And we saw that silver mine production in 2020 was down 24,400 ounces, obviously because of the pandemic. Silver recycling in 2020 was at five. 1,660 tons. It's a lot. Global mine production and silver recycling in 2020. This is from the World Silver Survey that comes from the Silver Institute for this year. Silver bars held by exchanges are 17,278 tons, which is 0.2% of the annual volume traded. And we can see how much is in the LBMA vaults, 12,600 A, 608 tons compared to 4,670 tons from the COMEX New York vaults. And uh, yes, it's a very interesting to, to, indeed to see here. However, the paper trading versus physical ratio, you can see that the LBMA markets, it's not as bad. 250 to 1, still pretty bad. That's the silver paper trading versus the physical silver supply. If you look at the flags, you can see how much of it is compared to what is on the physical silver inventory. The COMEX has a lot more 
Hence why, if it does jive here with that, how much is in the vaults for the COMEX New York, is only 4,670 tons. Um, indeed, and that is a telling of the tape. But the thing is, as is always the case, all commodities typically have larger paper holdings than they do the, the physical to back them up because they're essentially trading upon futures or representations of the metal or the commodity uh, and that people will never want. Who's going to want a bunch of soybeans or pork bellies or any other commodity or oil? I mean, we're not going to store oil in a barrel, although obviously some of them, us do for heating oil. But usually there's a use for it. We're utilizing, utilizing it. There's a few of us that obviously stack physical silver. And so for us, it does make sense. But nonetheless, there is that aspect of it here. So we move down here. We can see that looking at the physical silver, what we have here, uh, and we have in the different allocations of what this is, we have high purity coins and bars investment grade precious metals and they usually come from leading silver refiners and mints and what is it about physical silver it's a monetary metal for thousands of years it's got no counterparty or credit risk it is a physical asset that's outside of the financial system which is becoming much more attractive these days and i think that's part of what has sparked the um, silver squeeze revolution here um, now, it is costly to mine, refine, and mint. It has intrinsic value. It's a tangible asset, but one of the negatives to it is it does have premiums that are tied to it, which you're not going to see with the paper markets. Premiums, and of course, it does take up some space, um, And uh, and and but it also has a lot of these different uses that are quite uh, um, evident, and we see it from day to day in, in all of our activities and for medicinal uses, industrial uses, it is a, in, interesting indeed to see how that is. Now, this talks about it as a monetary metal, but those other uses means that it has a commodity level to it as well. In fact, I would say the markets see it as much more of a commodity than as an investment precious metal, which is kind of an oxymoron in my view, or a monetary metal. Um, and so therefore, the only risk that you have with it is for the price to go down if you're to buy in the physical form and that you may not recapture your premiums or that the only way you would recapture your premiums is if you were to um, see this rise of spot price go up. So what about this investment as physical silver? You have bullion silver coins and bullion silver bars. You have 17,700 tons of American silver eagles minted since 1986. When you think about that um, in terms of uh, how much was minted since 1986 just with the American silver eagles, 17,700 tons. That's, that's amazing. And uh, the Royal Canadian Mints maples since 1988 are far behind in terms of the number of those coins minted at 9,800 tons. In total, 27,500 tons of silver have been minted into American silver eagles and Canadian silver maples. Look at those bars. Pretty amazing to see that. All the different forms of bars and coins. And they're even showing uh, recently dated coins here from 2021. I think that's pretty cool. They're showing that. Now, let's talk about the paper silver, the boring stuff. It's unallocated, synthetic, fractionally backed silver, derivatives on silver, and other claims on silver, but not silver itself. So, for a bullion bank, it's unallocated. You've got silver futures, you've got OTC silver derivatives, ETFs, which are exchange-traded funds, unallocated and synthetic holdings, silver mining stocks, and screen silver. And uh, so, you know, I mean, but the thing is, is just because they're not actual silver does not mean there's not a purpose for it. And people can leverage silver even without actually holding the physical. I know some people that have done that and they don't want the inconvenience of having to hold the physical. They want to have it as a hedge, a case of economic instability where they can literally just cash out if they want to. And essentially, that's what happened in, 
in March of 2020, when we saw that big crash. Silver futures are normally cash settled and rolled. Physical delivery is cumbersome. Paper silver provides exposure to the silver price, but not to silver itself. Paper silver has counterparty risk and credit risk. And obviously there's no ownership of physical silver. Silver exchange traded funds provided ownership of units of shares, not ownership of silver. So those are things to consider. Most people understand that going into them. And there are people that stack the physical silver that also buy the ETFs. I've never actually dabbled in that world, but others have. Now, one thing we know, and I think that most would even agree that have dabbled with or have exclusively traded into the exchange traded funds, is that physical silver is real and tangible. Physical silver has many uses, both investment and industrial. Investment demand competes with industrial demand for available silver supply. That's very true. We saw that with the silver squeeze. However, I would make the argument that the that the industrial demand won that battle. So what does investment band demand look like? I don't really like that word. I like to think of it as hedging demand. It looks like silver coins, silver bars, silver bullion jewelry, which I honestly have never heard of. I've heard of gold bullion jewelry, but not silver bullion jewelry. And then we see the uh, investment demand for ETFs, which is not physical. So what does it look like for industrial demand? Well, we have electrical, bio size, so that's the medical field for sure, all that's involved in it. Silverware, electronics, photography, photovoltaics, which is a massively growing field and replacing pretty much photography in terms of the demand uh, amount for silver. And, uh, and the electronics is also taken away from the photography because many of our electronics can take photos. Then you see it in religious objects, jewelry, and batteries. So a total of 1,835,000 ounces of silver has been mined throughout history. However, about 50% of this total has been lost over time through industrial and photographic usage. I disagree with that statement. Silver is never lost. It may have been discarded, but it does not mean that they don't know where it is and that it cannot be recovered. It's just not economically viable to do so. So, another downside of the two physical silver is having to store it. Paper silver does not need to be stored because there's nothing to store. Investment silver bars and silver coins are tangible and valuable and need to be securely stored. As you see in this picture here, wholesale silver bars are stored in secure warehouses and vaults. They can be stored in a vault, and they can be stored in safe deposit boxes, or at home. All three have their own unique risks to them. Retail silver bars and coins can be stored in vaults or safe deposit boxes. And um, so they are saying, hey, to invest in physical silver, free of goods and services tax, that's in Singapore, but... That doesn't mean that you're free of tax in the United Kingdom and, and in Europe. The VAT, value-added tax, is going to get you. going to get you good, especially for silver, unless it's in-country silver. you got high-purity bars and coins. It's a monetary metal. It's tangible wealth preservations. And if you should buy from leading mints and refineries, uh, and um, it's highly liquid worldwide, Adding physical coins and bars to your retirement plan is a way to go too. A precious metals IRA is a possibility. Collect, gift, and bequeath silver coins and bars. Full allocated ownership. And that is important. Fully allocated ownership. Physical silver is a monetary metal. It cannot be stated enough. Although I like to think of it as a hibernating monetary metal. Many countries have historically used silver standard monetary system for quite a while defined by a fixed weight of silver, circulating silver coinage as legal tender, settlement of international trade in silver. Most of our history of the world has used silver as money. It's only since the 60s, the mid-60s, that that stopped in most places. And uh, many modern fiat currency names owe their origin, origin to monetary silver. 
such as dollar, which comes from taller, short version of the Jakmans taller, a silver coin which was minted and mined in Jakminstal, Bohemia. Then the pound sterling, derived from the English silver coin sterling, 240 of which weighed a pound of silver. Then the rupee, derived from the Sanskrit word rupia, which means wrought silver coin. A dinar owes its origin to the denarius, small silver coin used in ancient Rome. Ruble, from the Russian verb rubit, to cut, where cuttings from silver bars served as a unit of weight and currency. Very interesting indeed. Then the peso, originally a large Spanish silver coin, whose name derives from the uh, term pesos plata, meaning silver weights. There you go. You can feel the weight of that. This is six ounces of silver. I'm slushing back and forth between my hands and this big Bullion Star 1,000 ounce bar by Horaeus and Bullion Star bars there. So very interesting indeed. A really cool infographic indeed, but take the information for what it's worth. You know, due diligence and research. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.